So we can um Bilalimin wa salatu wa salamu ala Sayyidil Mursaleen wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man tabiyahum bi ihsan ila yawm al-din. All right, so I um, think inshallah we continue with uh, Swajathia and we had reached Su 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 uh, verse number 22. Wa khalaqa Allahu samawati wal arda bil haqq. Those of you who are online are hearing, I hope, inshallah. I think they hear. So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us about who Allah says وَخَلَقَ اللَّهُ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ Allah has created the heavens and the truth it is translated by the Mufassirin Haq as Hikmah Wisdom in how it operates. For example, many of you would have heard about about this hurricane. It's not a simple thing to form, you know. It takes a lot of different conditions coming together to create that circulate, circulating band of air and of absorbing all of that rainfall and so on and, and cause that are not happening haphazardly but from the scientific point of view a lot of things come together for that that to happen and from this Allah has planned it like this so Allah says he has created this world the heavens and the earth Belhak to jaza kullu nafsin and every nafs, everyone is going to be re a prize or a gift but for whatever he has earned. Kasaba means a world. And Allah SWT has given us a, a world in which there are going to be consequences for our actions compensated depending on what you did in this world. And that compensation, positive and negative, positive and negative, Meaning it can be a reward or it can be the lamun. But no one is going to be wronged. In other words, nobody will get a jaza a reward more than they deserve. Or vice versa. You will You'll never be cheated or short. Everyone who commits a good will get that reward that is deserving for them, and everyone who commits a sin will get that, that punishment that is deserving for them as well. So Allah says in the next verse, and we would have heard these verses before. 
but the, before the Hijra, would have been a means of bringing to light the understanding Standing of deen for the people who are coming into opposed to the fact that what they do will be a recompense for them under the day of judgment. Allah says in the next verse, Afara Aita Manit. Do not see, talking to the Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, have you not seen that one who has taken his desires, his lust, his carnal desires, right? Oh, following his own desires. whatever he wants to do. The messenger slip or death, but the foolish person is the one who he he desires and has that foolish faith that Allah I will forgive him for everything. No matter what I the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa he's foolish. To follow his desires and then think that it will be all forgiven. Allah says, and Allah, He lets him go astray. So, two different meanings. Ala ilm. That Allah is following his own desires. Allah knowingly allows him to go. Or that despite the knowledge that he has, right? Despite the knowledge that he has, he still goes astray. Despite his own. own elm and his own knowledge. Sometimes have it, Ibn Kathir says that this one it refers to a person who he obeys his desires and follows the dictates of his nafs. The person possessed knowledge yet he followed his desires and obeyed the dictates of his nafs. So that's why knowledge alone is not is not the important thing. Practicing upon the knowledge. How many how many people know we have studied? But the knowledge has no benefit. For them, Allah just a matter of a person not having the knowledge that He allows His desires to lead him astray. But, but a person, even with knowledge, may go astray. Allah says, Allah puts. A seal, Khatamahim, upon his hearing, there is a seal. seal. His sight, his seeing, Rishawa, there is a veil. He's thinking right, he's not seeing right. His knowledge, despite his, Allah causes that his, you know, his, 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 his 
whole demeanor that Allah says, فَمَنْ يَهْدِيهِ مِنْ بَعْدِ الله. So who can help him, who can guide him, except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And therefore Allah says, أَفَلْ لَا تَذَكَّرُونَ Will you not get an, you know, a message? Will you not be mindful? Will you not be... receive an admonition from Asawi. He says that in this verse, <coughs> Allah is describing the unbelievers and he gives them four different qualities. Four qualities of the unbelievers that, you know, we have in our own lives. One quality is that they worship their own desires. Time to pray, but they say, no, I want to sleep now. That's my desire. Allah says, this pork is haram, but I feel I must eat a piece of this pork. So one of the qualities of disbelief, of the disbelievers, is that they follow their own desires. The second quality, Alam Asawi says, that is mentioned in this verse, is that they became misguided. Today you will find in some of the top universities in the world, like Oxford and Cambridge and so on, scholars who are teaching Islam, Islamic studies, but they are not Muslim. They are not Muslim. Can you say they have no knowledge? They know more Arabic than me and you. They know more Hadith than me and you. They know more Quran than, than we do. But despite their knowledge, they have been led astray or they have led themselves astray or they have allowed themselves to go astray. So they became misguided although they had knowledge. The next thing is that their hearts and their ears have become sealed. This is not the right thing to do. They cannot, they will not hear because their hearts are already convinced, it's already gone astray. Their hearing has already gone astray. And their eyesight, they will not see the truth. They will not see this truth. So then who... Again, can guide them. Only Allah, because they have led themselves astray despite the knowledge that they have been given. Despite the knowledge. The above verse teaches... That the believers desires by being obedient to the carnal desires of the nafs. When we talk about the carnal desires of the nafs, we talk about things like adultery and fornication and homosexuality and <laughs> pornography and gambling and alcohol and illegal drugs. These are the things that or stealing even, with regard to wealth and money and corruption. Allah says that if they begin the the, the, the meaning of the verse is that if they begin to follow as if they, they have taken their nafs as their God. And whosoever does this and allows his desire to control his life, then he will be misguided. So it is a, it is how the disbelievers are and a, a warning for us as well about how we should not be. But these disbelievers, they, this is an example of now in this next verse, Allah shows how they were called ma hiya illa hayatuna dunya. He said, they say that there is nothing Illa hayatuna dunya except our life in this world. We don't worry about the hereafter. Sometimes you go, if you're doing da'wah, you go to an unbeliever, he said,
tells to you, well, okay, you prove to me that there's that proves that there is a hereafter. Bring it. Let me see it. You can't, huh? You can't. So one day that reminds me, you know, one day I was doing a khutbah in one of these masjids, and the person came after the khutbah. He said, Imam, that was a real, well, that was a real good khutbah. You know, he said, but you ever hear this fellow? He said, this man has so much qualities that he could make some dhikr and then he could go to the moon and take a rock and bring it back and show it in his hand. <laughs> so he's telling me, yeah. <laughs> now who could go to the moon? Really, really, yeah? who could go to the moon? You need a spaceship to go to the moon. Huh? You think anybody could just do some dhikr and go to the moon? So it is just that he could go to the moon and he will show you a rock from the moon. You know, so people, when they become misguided, there is nothing except Allah who can bring them back to guidance. So they say there is nothing more than this knife. They say, uh, and we live. We die and we live. This is life. وَمَا يُهْلِكُنَا And there is nothing that destroys us إِلَّا dahar, Except time. Only time causes us to come to an end. Only time. No day of judgment. No, no fixed period of time. No creator. No Allah. Only time, right? This was the belief of the of those who came before. Ibn Kathir says that Allah here mentions the creed of the atheists and the Arab idolaters. Who used to deny resurrection, nothing else, right? And uh, this was also the statement of the philosophers who used to deny that it was even a creator and that the world, they used to say that the world used to go through in a cycle. The world is a cycle. And every 36,000 years, a new cycle will start. So there's no, there's only a cycle of the world. Everything cycles around. Now the world really does have cycles, eh? The nitrogen cycle, the water cycle, the ammonia cycle. But the whole world doesn't just cycle and end. end and start back. No, there's a beginning and has no end. So they used to say that only time used to destroy them. They believed that the only thing that caused them to die or come to an end was a passing of time. They didn't believe that man had a fixed lifespan that Allah had ordained but they believe that time came and the cycle that it would, that would be it that is why Abu Huraira he narrates that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam he says that the people of the pre-Islamic time you say it is It is the night and the day that destroys us. As the night and the day come, we are getting closer to the end of our time. One day, one night. And it is true in a sense that as days go by, the last days we have in, our, in this world. But this is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not that time is the destroyer. During the pre-Islamic, so uh, Um, so, sorry, um, they used to say that it was the day and the night that would destroy us. Abu Hurairah and also says that I heard the Messenger of Allah saying that the, Adam, saying that the son of Aram curses time. That Allah says in Hadith Qudsi, the son of Aram Curses time. They used to say only time would call says I am time. I am the owner and I am the creator of time. The night and the day lie in my hand. In another hadith, 
He says that Allah says, one of you must not say, oh, what a disappointing time. What a bad time. What an... Short time. He didn't live long enough. He died an, an untimely death. Right? The time was wrong. Blaming the time. He was... in the wrong time he was in the wrong place at the wrong time if he was in the wrong, right place at the wrong time now what happens <laughs> if he was in the right place or if he was in the wrong place at the right time so the prophet says allah says you mustn't say what what a disappointing time what a bad time the one who created time I alternate his night and his day, and whenever I wish, I will seize both of these. Your life and your death is really in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? Do not curse them the message this time. Because when, in the time of the disbelievers, in the, in the pre-Islamic times, whenever... A disaster took place. They used to say, woe to the time. What a bad time. In other words, they were... They were denying a creator had caused Time was their God. Time was their creator. Right? Woe to the time. So they used to blame the time for the bad incidents and curse it in the process. This is why they used to cut the since truthfully he causes all incidents to happen. But Allah says, ilm. But concerning that, malahum there is not for them min ilm. In any ilm, any knowledge, they don't waste the time. In who in whom they are only upon dhan. Dhan is conjecture. You know, think guessing about it. Speculation about it. Without having that faith that it is really Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the dhan. But Allah says about these people as well, وَإِذَا تُتْلَى عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتُنَا بَيِّنَاتِ Our clear signs are recited to them. مَا كَانَ حُجَّتُهُمْ حُجَّتَهُمْ Their only argument, the only, the only thing they could come up with they couldn't come up with anything except illa and kalu, except that they would say attack to be our fathers in kuntum sadiqin if you are truthful if you say that it's not time that causes death and destruction and there is a creator who has created created man and created life, then bring them back. Bring them back if you are truthful. This is the argument to the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Here the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was then told to inform them Allah said that the message Allahu yuhyikum Allah is the one who gives you life. And Allah is the one who causes you to to die. And it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who will cause you, who will gather you on the day of judgment. La raiba fihi, there is no doubt in that. Well, I cannot ask of the people, they do not know, they do not understand. 
the messenger sallallahu alaihi was sallam is instructed to inform the allah is the one who takes life every beginning in the womb everyone begins their life in the womb by the permission of allah and allah Causes them to die on the earth when the resurrection and on resurrection on the day of judgment, there will be then life hereafter. So, life life, death, and judgment are all fixed, and it's not for Allah to accede to the request made by the polytheists to bring their fathers alive to prove the truth of life. No, this is where your faith comes. Allah is the one who has created your life. But Allah says, وَلَكِنْ أَكْثَرَ النَّاسِ لَا يَعْلَمُ الْمُوسِ Most of the mankind, they do not know. They do contemplation, make them fail to recognize the power and the ability of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And fails them to recognize that Allah belongs. Alone belongs the heaven and the earth. And on the day when that hour, that sa'atun will be established, on that day of Of the judgment, those who are those who are preaching falsehood, those who are the people of falsehood, those who are those who are the hypocrites, they are going to be be the ones who are going to be says Ya Khasarul Mubatilun. And that day they are going to be the ones who are the losers. It makes it means that those who followed falsehood, like the unbelievers who rejected what Allah revealed to his prophets and denied the evidences of Allah, they'll be on a in a state of loss under the I will enter Jannah. Those who are believing in uh, disbelieving in Allah, they will enter hell. And Allah says. What and on that day. And on that day you will see every one, every ummah, every nation, Jathia, kneeling down, Jatha to kneel. This is where the surah gets its name. Everyone to the Aila Kitabiha. And everyone, every person, every nation, kul kul. in every nation the aila kitabiha be called to his book his record he'll be called to his record al yawma tujzawna today you will be recompensed ma kun kuntum ta'malun over that which you use the day of judgment some of the scholars say that when Allah says, وَتَرَى كُلَّ أُمَّةٍ جَاثِيَةً On that day, every the Ummah will be kneeling, some of the scholars say, in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but many of the other scholars say that every nation, every person kneeling before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala waiting for his reckoning. Waiting for his reckoning. Fall to their knees, kneeling, fearful of the tremendous calamity and events. And Hafiz Ibn Kathir said, This will happen when the fire of Jahannam will be brought forth in front of them.
and it will ex everyone will need will fall down to the ground because of the heat, including the Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam, the Khalil of Allah. He will he will say nafsi nafsi nafsi. The Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam as he will say today I will not ask you Allah but about myself and even Isa alayhi salam will proclaim. Today I will not ask you about anyone except myself. I will not ask you about Maryam who gave birth to me. Prophet Ibn Kathir is not standing in front of Allah and then the fire of Jahannam is both and the fire of Jahannam exhales. The heat, the scorching wind of that exhalation of the fire of Jahannam will cause every single human being to fall on his knees and everybody's going to I forgot, oh, this was my lover in the world. Before I would cut my wrist for that one. But in that life, on that day, when they feel the heat of that fire of Jahannam, nafsi, nafsi, I don't care what you are. anymore. Me! So it's like a reality, you know? And everybody, their book will be bought for them. This book of deeds. Allah says in verse 29 of this this book of deeds هَذَا كِتَابُنَا كِتَابُنَا يَنْتِكُوا عَلَيْكُمْ يَنْتِكُوا that speaks alaykum about you Bel Haq it gives the truth right you know today you could you could go and change things in books you know change things in books the girl who have no no passport I don't know how to reach the country without a passport so I, I call him and say boy I can't register this marriage because the ministry says there's no path. Passport? How oh, she reach from Venezuela to China? No way, I got pay my father. <laughs> he want me to. I don't he said, you organize it now. In other words, change the book now. Go up there, go up in the ministry there and let them make a change. We will fix it up. We sort it out. Right? And this fella wants his license, but the boy can't read. So I said, well, can't get his license. We can't read. How are you going to pass the, um, how you pass the, 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 what you call it? The registration. Re -re Regulations. The fella said, what? I said, that is illegal. He said, no, no, that's not illegal. I said, but he said, treat us another. And he called some name, eh? I won't call the name. Some driver, a guy who will do the, the driving thing. He said, let's give this man money. He will give you the permit. Everything, $3,000. I said, but that's illegal. He said, no, that's not illegal. That's true that. <laughs> <laughs> he said, that's true that. You know what he tell me after? He said, you was there, Roger? You was there when he said, this is illegal if I can catch. But this is it. People will try to change. They change, but Allah is saying, Hada kitabuna. This is our book. You can't change our book. You can't. You can't change what is written in this book. It is going to speak about you, the truth. Can't make any changes. Inna kunna nasta. Inna kunna. to change and to abrogate right but it says here in nakuna certainly we used to always none have it the malaika the angels used to always be writing ma kuntum ta'amalun whatever you used to be doing subhanallah whatever you used to do the angel
Because, right? In the Kunna, Nasaka, to, to abrogate or to, to change, to, to put down. In this case, it means you have to transcribe, to write down, to record. Ma kuntum ta'amalu. Whatever you used to do. The angels record the deeds of the servants. The angels record the deeds of the servants and then they ascend to the Jannah with these deeds. There they meet the angel and down from Allah al Mahfuz on each net of Al Qadr containing what Allah has written. will occur from the servants long before you can find out that not a single letter was added or deleted. In other words, this is also telling us, then Ibn, then, uh, Ibn Abbasi besides this verse, what is, what is this? Because what you do, so the, 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 the hadith is being used to prove that the angels are recording and the angels have recorded everything, but also day of La the night of Laylatul Qadr for you for the next year come, right? Like who will go for Hajj this year? Who will die this year? Who will you know get a business this year? Whose house will burn down this year? Whatever has been written. Tawhul Mahfuz. Compare what the angels was writing last year came with. You'll find that everything that is written there. Is exactly what is written here, isn't it? It's, they don't make any mistake, they don't fall asleep. Right? They write exactly what has happened. Happening. And therefore, it's a reminder for indeed, we always had your deeds recorded by the angels. And therefore, Allah says in verse number 30, for Ammaladina Amanu, so for those who believe. deeds for rabbuhum then their Lord will enter them fi rahmatihi into his mercy into his rahma dhalika that is the clear fouls and the clear success Allah speaks about his judgment to the people on the day of judgment and states that those who believed in him and did good deeds in his life, he will end. Enter them into his mercy, which is Rahma, it means into his Jannah. As Jannah is referred to as Allah's mercy in this verse and others other verses, because it is the abode which is fit. with Allah's mercy. Right, his Jannah in Hadith, and he says he addresses his he addresses his Jannah by saying, "You are my mercy, with which I show mercy to those of my servants whom I will," and that is the great success. And then Allah says, "Afaru," and as for those who disbelieved, "Afalam takun ayati." Tutla alaykum. Fastak barudi mean they are going to be told Afala Amta kun ata ata tutla alaykum. Were not my verses recited upon you? In other words, Here is your condition now. You have come. Were they not recited upon you? Fastak barutum, but you are proud, you are arrogant.
istikbar. You had to mujuri mean you were sinners, evil, wrongdoers, criminals. You did. Didn't want to take a lesson about your life, about about life, right? Their haughty behavior. And when the prophets and the righteous people came to them to deliver the message of truth, they turned away in arrogance from listening to the verse of Allah and rejected. The belief in one in the oneness of Allah on this. Allah says in verse 32, Wa idha kila, and whenever it was said to them, Inna wa'dallahi haq. The promise of Allah, it is true. Sa'atu, and the, the, the hour. La raiba fiha. There is no doubt concerning the day of judgment. There is no doubt concerning the coming of the hour. You used to say, Ma nadari, ma nadari. What what do what do we see? What do we know? Ma. Nadari, masa. What do we know? We do not. We do not know anything about an hour, dear judgment. We only know about this world. Ma nadari, masa. Ah, we do not know. Inna dunnu illa dun, illa dunna. Right. We do not think about that hour. Our in the dunna, except that it is some kind of fantasy, some kind of dun, some kind of assumption, some kind of super superstitious thing. And we never right. Yakina means to be convinced. We don't know about this hour. We used to always think about this hour as some kind of just some 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 talk. We had no firm conviction. They would be reminded on the day of judgment when it was said to them in the world. world that. The day of judgment is out of mockery and out of fun. We don't know anything about an hour. What hour? What hour? Right? In fact, they made it clear that they had no belief regarding it. And they considered it to be conjecture. They used to mock the day of judgment. Allah says, وَبَدَى وَبَدَى لَهُمْ سَجِعَاتِ And the the, the, it will come lahum to them, it will appear to them. Sayyatu ma amilu, the evil that they used to do. Waha qabihim, I will surround them, it will surround them. All of their sins will surround them. وَهَاقَ بِهِمْ مَا كَانُوا بِهِ يَسْتَهْزِئُونَ What do you say? Makat. What do you say? Makat will, it will overwhelm them. No. No. So in other words, it, it, what was wrong them? مَا كَانُوا بِهِ يَسْتَهْزِئُونَ All that they used to mock, the day of judgment, the fire of Jahannam. This verse explains that the consequences of their evil and wicked deeds will become manifest to them and their punishment and chastisement that they used to make a mockery of with some humiliating punishment of hell and it will be said to them in the fire of Jahannam وَقِيلَ الْيَوْمَ نَنْسَاكُمْ It will be said to them Yauma Nangsakum Kama 
نسيتم we are going to forget you كما نسيتم just like you forgot لقاء يوم يومكم هذا just like you forgot this meeting of ours just like you forgot you are going to be forgotten again وَمَأْوَاهُمُ النَّارِ and your abode will be the fact of Jahannam وَمَا لَكُمْ any assistance and any help Allah says ذَلِكُمْ بِأَنَّكُمْ بِأَنَّكُمْ تَقَذْتُمْ آيَاتِ اللَّهِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala huzwa as a joke as a mock as a mockery right وَغَوَّتُ We you, you became deceived and deluded by hayatul dunya, by the life of this world. We, we enjoy this life so much we forget about the hereafter. So Allah says to them, فَالْيَوْمَ لَا يُخْرَجُونَ so minha, they will not be taken away from that. They will not come out of that. They will not come out of that hell. Minha, they will not come out of that. Wala hum yun and they will not be given any chance. They will not be given any chance to to chance to be given a respite, a chance to atone for their sins, right? Ataba means the it means the blame. Wallahum yusta tabun. They will not be given. Allah says, Falilahil Hamd. So all praises due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. رب السماوات ورب الأرض. All praise is due to Allah who is the Rub of the heavens and the Rub of the earth, the sustainer of the heavens and the sustainer of the earth. رب العالمين is the Rub of all of the worlds. And Allah says so here after Allah first of all tells you about the the one verse about the believers. And many verses about the disbelievers, why they have found themselves, what they have done wrong, how they, they will not be given a chance, how they, how they used to ignore. Allah says, this is going to be their final abode. Allah says, Wallahu al kibriya'u. And for him, for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Is al kibriya the greatness and the greatness of the earth? Wahu al aziz al hakim, and he is almighty, and he is all wise. So here, this verse explains that all praise is due to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Who is the creator and the master in all of the heavens and the earth? The magnificence, the grandeur, and the glory, gloriousness belongs to Allah, the mighty, the unlimited power, and the wise. So when we reflect on these verses, we recognize that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala starts off of this set of verses saying, and everything in the world, in the heavens and in the earth, it doesn't happen by mistake. It happens because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has deliberately put this system in place. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not created everything going on in a cycle or in a circle. But Allah is the determinant for everything. The time you will stay in this world. What happens to you in this world? What happens in the hereafter? And therefore believe in the hereafter and obey the commands of Allah.
And then Allah gives the glad tidings of the who follow the commands of Allah. And then Allah gives the punishment of those who disbelieve in Allah. So this is like an uh, appropriate way to end the surah. This is the end of Surah al jathiya the kneeling. And in these verses came as well the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to put everybody when the winds of the Jahannam blow. Blows upon everybody. They will kneel those who believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So mashallah, this is the end of Surah al jathiya And the next surah is Surah al ahqaf Similar surah again. Now, of course, all of these surahs, even though they have similar themes, they were not revealed at the same time. One after the other. They were put in place one after the other, but as a reinforcement to the believers and as a reinforcement of a warning to the disbelievers as well that they must not commit any sin. So, Jazakallah, inshallah, for those of you who are viewing online, we'll stop here today um, because of the time, of course, and we will begin with the next surah, Surah al ahqaf next week insha'Allah Zakallah Assalamu alaikum